Good evening. Today is Tuesday, June 6, 2017. Welcome to the Government News Brief. In the news this evening, Guyana will enjoy significant benefit from oil resources. The government has negotiated a 200% increase. Minister of Public Security renews calls for fishermen to be security conscious and four hinterland schools benefit from internet connectivity. These and other stories when the news returns. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying with us. I am Renetta LaFleur. Here are the details. The government of Guyana assures all Guyanese that it continues to ensure that our country and its people realize the greatest benefit from the emerging oil and gas sector. This is despite political naysaying and partisan salvos designed to create anxiety and stoke fears in society. The royalties and profit-sharing revenue are comparable with the world standard and will redound to the benefit of all Guyanese. In fact, the coalition government confirms that the 2% royalties represent a 200% increase on what the former PPP government had negotiated while it was in office before 2015. At present values, the 2% will now give Guyana $7.5 billion in annual revenues in addition to the 50% share of profits. Under the Barrett Jagdir regime, Guyana would have only received profits. Therefore, the additional revenues negotiated by the government represent a massive increase on what Guyana would have been saddled with under the PPP negotiated deal. In light of the recent piracy attack at the mouth of the Waini River Region 1, Minister of Public Security Kemraj Ramjatan renews calls for fishermen to protect themselves with simple measures when going out to sea. Details in this Seneca Thorne story. Minister of Public Security Kemraj Ramjatan has renewed his call for fishermen to protect themselves. However, many fishermen are reluctant to defend themselves by adopting simple measures measures which can save their lives. I have begged them to buy the transponders so that when they are in trouble, we can see where in the ocean they are. They don't even want to buy the transponders. So they want to make all kinds of fanciful de de development. I will work along with them. But they must understand that we have difficulties both in relation to amount of policemen that we have and the fact that they themselves don't want to defend themselves. Seagoing fishermen were given several options to protect themselves. Over a year ago, they were encouraged to purchase shotguns as a means of protection. Why is it that they don't want to defend themselves? I will give them a shotgun, they will go to the police station, collect the shotgun when they are going out, or when they are coming in, they give it back. So if somebody come with a boat to the side of them, and that person attack them, they could fight back. We, don't we cannot afford at this time to have police patrolling with our fishermen whilst they catch off the fish. And so that is my response to them. The police force is working with the Guyana Defence Force Coast Guard to patrol fishing areas. However, fisher folk have their roles to play to protect themselves. Minister Ramjatan explained that it is logistically impossible to have police officers accompanying all fishermen when they go to sea. For the Government News Brief, Seneca Thorne reporting. Thank you, Seneca. Students from four hinterland secondary schools are the newest beneficiaries of government's e-government program. Here is more. The students from secondary schools in regions 7, 8, and 9 are now benefiting from high-speed internet for education purposes. Presidential Advisor E-Government Floyd Levi notes that the schools have been provided with internet via satellite to the classrooms for the students. We have so far connected the, uh, the high school in Letem at St. Ignatius, at Sand Creek, at um, Paramakotoy, uh, at Waramadong, and we're actually working on the one 
at Anai at uh, Bina Hill there. So those, um, I would like to call them dormitory high schools, almost like a boarding school in the hinterland, um, where students from the surrounding region would actually go for high schooling. We've actually connected them in the same way that we've connected the schools on the coast. The presidential advisor highlights that the program, which was rolled out in 2016, is designed to interconnect government ministries and agencies through information communications technology, ICT hubs. So we've got, um, as Minister said, 54 hubs um, along the coast. Um, and it's really along the coast because that's where we are currently. But in those same locations that we mentioned in the, in the hinterland, we were going to be, um, it's dual purpose, education, and for government business during the day and in the evenings it's going to be open up to the community for them to have access to it. Minister of Public Telecommunications Catherine Hughes explains that the internet can also be used for entrepreneurial opportunities and transform Guyana. Our agenda is to ensure that we can connect especially our hinterland remote communities and also there's a special emphasis on poor communities. Uh, we feel that the technology, if used correctly, if used in the area of uh, telemedicine, if used for online learning, for education, as we saw here today, then we really believe that is how we can start to transform Guyana. Levi is urging beneficiaries to develop their computer skills and utilize the forthcoming hubs for business purposes, especially for accessing government services. The Guyana National Bureau of Standards urges consumers to be vigilant and purchase from vendors only with approved and verified skills. More in this Delicia Haynes report. Head of the GNBS Metrology Department, Shailendra Rai, says that consumers need to ensure that vendors use scales that have been verified with the signature of the inspector along with the date when it was verified, among other measures. In addition to that, the, the scale must be in good condition, it must be on a level surface, also the consumer must be able to witness the, the weighing of your products. The, products. the weighing of your product must be done in your presence. Unless if the product is prepackaged in advance. Ryan notes that consumers need to be alert when purchasing from vendors, since his agency observed that the domestic weighing devices were being used for commercial trade. We have a serious situation with those scales because those scales are not approved for commercial trade. They are designed for domestic use. So once person use them for commercial trade, the likelihood is that the consumer would be robbed. So what I would like to do is to advise consumers once you see someone using at that dial scale, you should not purchase from them, the, the ones that are designed for domestic use. You should not purchase from them because it's like you're asking them to rob you. Close to 380 unapproved and unverified devices were seized and removed from vendors of both the border and Starbrook markets during a raid. Rice says that vendors were advised to desist from using those scales, but they failed to do so, which led to the removal of the devices. He notes that the devices are required to be approved and verified twice yearly. Last year, the GNBS conducted 7,632 surveillance visits to businesses, which resulted in the seizure of 694 defective scales and 394 masses countrywide. For the Government News Brief, Delicia Haynes. Thank you, Delicia. The issue of overpayment to contractors and workers is a recurring theme as government entities appear before the Public Accounts Committee to answer questions pertaining to financial irregularities highlighted in the 2015 Auditor General's report. The entities also provide answers relating to their progress in recovering these monies. At a recent PAC meeting, the Guyana Defence Force came in for praise for improving its financial management by Chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, Ifran Ali. I think you are genuinely trying to improve things. I want to commend you. However, the Ministry of Public Security has experienced difficulty in recovering monies it overpaid to contractors. PAC member Charindas Prasad suggests how the Ministry of Public Security can recover overpayments. We can do what you call a set-off. Mr. So-and-so, look, you are, we're not taking you out of the system. You have been granted through the bidding system, the tenders. You have been granted another contract. But we are going to take so much money from you every month or every however you're going to pay to offset this amount outstanding. It is called a set-off. We owe you 
You owe us. The Ghana Police Force informed the PAC that it is making every effort to recover overpaid monies to former employees while putting measures in place to prevent reoccurrence. The PAC also encouraged the Ghana Elections Commission to improve the management of its resources. For the government news brief, Tiffany Rogers. The oldest African female functioning artist from St. Vincent and the Grenadines is in Guyana exhibiting her work introducing to the society the culture of the beautiful Caribbean island while embracing the rich Guyanese culture. Gabriella Patram tells us more. Her pieces represent her mind, heart, and soul. 70-year-old Josette Norris is an humble woman from small beginnings. Norris is here based on the request from her son-in-law, Ronald Birch Smith. She is camera shy and prefers her work to speak for her. At her current exhibition at 160 Waterloo Street, Norris says that painting is something that she always wanted to do at the tender age of five. There was never getting in. I think from the time I was born, I had this idea I was going to be an artist, even when I didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. Like, I just knew that this was something that made me very happy doing, that everything else that I could or couldn't do, this is the thing that I really love to do. Norris studied at the Jamaican School of Art, where she learned extensively about the industry. The road was not without its challenges, as she was refused admission from a famous Canadian college, which damped her spirits a little but never kept her down. Like David Hockney, I went to Canada before that to go to the Ontario College of Art, and they didn't they turned me down for admission, and I was so upset. That after about two and a half years, I came. I went back to St. Vincent, and then I read about David Hockney. He's very famous. Um, he's British, but he lives in California. Artist, and I really liked his work. And what was great is that he also left England to go to Canton, went to Canada to go to the same Ontario College of Art, and they didn't let him in. <laughs> and now he's world famous. <laughs> so I go like, I'm in good company. <laughs> While sitting on the veranda of her home, she would see different persons on bicycles riding and engaging in stunts, so she became fascinated by bicycles in Guyana and has created a book which entails a number of things persons do on bicycles. For every artist, there is always a favorite piece in their collection. Norris points the P.I. Gina to the piece that touches her every time. It started out with one thing. And then to me, it was like a bird trying to emerge from, it's like a cycle, really. It's like, this the bird, it's like the chicken mm -hmm. and egg story. I don't know which one started first. That's how it actually evolved, because I really can't remember if it's the egg that started it or the bird that started it. But whatever it went in that, and, and the, the colors too that I was doing, it was like a flame. And then the whole thought process was that there's the egg, and then there's the, the bird, and then the whole thing bursts into flame, and, you know, it goes up and then comes down. Norris is also a multimedia artist and goldsmith. Her exhibition runs until Saturday, June 10, from 18 hours to 20 hours. For the Government News Brief, Gabriella Batram. Thank you, Gabriella. We have come to the end of today's edition of the Government News Brief. The details of these and other stories can be found on Gina's website. Gina has an active Facebook page and we encourage you to visit and like us so you can be informed as the news unfolds. Remember to join again tomorrow for another edition of the Government News Brief. Have a great evening.